Hey everybody, it is a gorgeous day here in Kingston. We're about a week into June and I just wanted to give you guys a little tour of the homestead and show you what we have going on. I'm just doing a cell phone video today as I walk through. It's fairly overcast, not too sunny and I just wanted to show you guys how the garden is coming in. So hope you enjoy it. Beautiful transitions. We have two gooseberry plants that are just filled with berries. We did have a minor aphid issue at the start of the year, but she's recovering really nicely. I personally always love these garden tours because it kind of shows you what's growing in, what's going out, all that sort of thing. It's just fun to see what people have in their space. Rocco's just enjoying his time. A little overcast today, so it's nice to be outside. There is an air warning, just because it has been so humid, not a lot of water, but we're making do. This bed here, we have a mixture of miniature pumpkins miniature gourds, although some of them don't look very miniature. And a variety of just some cut flowers, some marigolds to bring in some pollinators. Tiny mini bell pepper at the front there. It was a replacement for a marigold that got munched on. As you come back here, you can see our broad Windsor. This one has really, really come in this year. I love the blooms on this one. They're so beautiful. It had a slight aphid issue as well. I think it's just because we had a really mild winter. Also refer er, referred to as black fly aphids when it comes to beans. But we topped them and so far so good. Another pest. <laughs> control uh, method right here on this corn. We had some very, very hungry, we assume rabbits. We don't typically do beds this low, but with the cost of lumber, we tried to save a little bit this year and tried some lower beds, but height definitely has its advantage. You're probably like, whoa, 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 what's in this bed? Mix of things as well. On the either end, we have a acorn squash. I love acorn squash, so I planted quite a few. We'll probably end up thinning a lot of them out. I have two sections where we have some pretty spent kale. They were in a pot, but they're getting pretty close to toast, so I wanted to toss them in and see what they did over the heat of the summer. Of course, we have some marigolds as well. These were ones I started, so that's why they're not in bloom. The other ones you see in bloom were from a greenhouse. Some transplanted onions. Corn as mentioned, although it's pretty cool corn. It's glass gem corn. And in the corners, some sunflowers, all at different various stages, all planted at the same time, but that's garden life for you. We come over through here. Don't mind the construction going on in the background. Neighbors are getting a roof today. That's what it was like living in a city. It's not all birds chirping and peaceful sounds. It's sometimes constructions and cars and alarms and all that fun stuff. This bed has kind of changed a little bit. It started as just being our giant pumpkin, but we've added a couple things just because we hated seeing the space so bare. So we have some tiny Tim tomatoes, some more onions, some Lumera, Kalinia, I think that's how it's pronounced and some bunny tail grass which has been very very tasty again I think it's rabbits but it's grass it grows back I love all the mulch that we laid down it looks so perfect only because it's pretty fresh and new we are out here weeding a fair bit but it's certainly certainly a task and a half Probably should have done this video just a little bit earlier today because at the front here you'll see that we did have some zucchini blooms 
Now this is my first time growing zucchini and I'm not sure if the blooms come again because the second one on the right there, it uh, bloomed yesterday but not today. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but we're letting everything take its time. This bed kind of turned into a mix of things for us. I love it. We're trying a square foot method for it. We we're trying this for a couple of our beds, but a couple of them we did take off the string. But what you can see here is zucchini, of course, as mentioned at the front. Some beautiful bright marigolds, some pepper plants, some onions. We kept some bunched and we kept a single one just to see how they would grow. We did a mix of a second sow of different lettuces. My husband Hans wanted to try it, so of course we had room, so why not play? We have some gifted parsley, I believe. If it's not parsley, it's cilantro. I'm still learning my herbs. I'm not a herby person, at least not in that caliber. We have some leeks here, some basil. We have miniature eggplant. That's a cherry style tomato. More peppers, more peppers. A very, very, very sad pepper. More tomatoes and more zucchini. Tiny lumera in the center there of the corner. And then we tried to transplant the still to see how it would go. So far so good, but only time will tell. You'll see where we got that from soon. This bed started as my husband's and he's really changed it a lot over the years. Years. Wow. That's how long we've been gardening. It's only been a couple months. Only a couple months here. <laughs> but in this bed, we have some bunching onions at the front. We have red onions. We have white onions. We have some basil, a marigold, and at the back, brandy wine tomatoes interesting trying the tomatoes at the back because most of our tomatoes are up front. A lot more sun up there. But we figured since this ginormous, ginormous, ginormous lot could take it, our tomatoes could take it back here. These are potato plants and it's so exciting for us because this is our first time growing potatoes. They're starting to bud, which means that I guess we're gonna start getting potatoes and we'll have to cover a lot of the lower parts of this bed. So lush and beautiful. Not sure gardening is like having children. You're not supposed to pick your favorites, but that's definitely a favorite bed for both of us. Of course, we like to test things out. So we drilled into some Rona buckets and we planted some potatoes in there as well. And then we just have a tomato chilling because why not? We had an extra one and we decided to toss it there in the space. And this is where all of the dill came from. I love this. I can see why all of the bugs come. It's so lush, you just want to lay down there yourself. We're planning on doing a lot of pickling, so that's why we have so much dill. We did have a little bit more space in here, so we decided to do the mixed kind of look that we did prior. So again, more onions, carrots, leeks, tomatoes, and then this is some brassicas. Truth be told, I did label I labeled the outside of my containers and when I repotted everything the labels didn't go with them so they got mixed up so these will be a surprise some of them are getting eaten but that makes sense again really late in the season we haven't done any kind of insect control These are either Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, or broccoli. Spin around. This is outside of our garden, but still inclusive. Little strawberries. Probably won't get anything this year from them, but hoping they fill out because his friend 
Didn't really work out there. We made these two little beds as well to kind of house some extras. Just trying different styles, different areas of our yard. So we have four different varieties. Actually, in this one we have five different varieties, but the other one that's similar to this are only four. And they're all different varieties of cherry tomatoes. So we have Sweet Millions, we have Candy Lamb, we have Blacks, we have Patio Tomatoes, and we have Tiny Tims all growing. And then we have a Marigold in the center and a Lumera just up there at the front. Don't wanna make you too dizzy. We'll get to the flower garden soon. But right behind me, we have a big old jerk flying by. That was a cabbage moth. This was the first bed we planted and we have been taking from it for several months now. We have a bed of carrots, four different varieties, three different varieties of beets. <clears throat> And speaking of that jerk, he likes to lay on beet tops and we haven't, like I mentioned, done any pest control or any kind of powders. There's lots of natural ones, but we just haven't personally done that this year. And it's certainly showing the effects, but so far it's not affecting our roots. So, you know, we're just uh, taking it one day at a time, I guess. Over here, we have some turnips as well. And then here, this was radishes, and it's, again, radishes. But as you can see, it's been cleared, and this is the second planting. The idea with this one, though, is we're going to let this one flower because you can actually eat the pods and the flowers of radishes once they've gone to seed and gone to flower. And we found a really cool pickling recipe, and we are going to try it. Speaking of things that were sowed a bit earlier, couple lettuces there mixed in with the bunny grass that got munched and we just brought up a little bit higher. They're kind of seeing the last end of their days but we're keeping around until they completely go. This bed here is all of our peppers. I would probably say this is my most neglected bed. I was not a good pepper parent this year. Lots of sun scald, lots of crispiness, barking dogs. <laughs> but we're just letting things go and doing some minor maintenance as we see fit. Speaking of lots of pickles, along with the million different varieties of cherry tomatoes that we have planted this year, cucumbers. So many varieties of cucumbers. I love how mixed this bed is because you can tell what I planted and you can tell what my husband planted. And if you're thinking um, that that entire crazy bed of cucumbers is not mine, you're wrong because it's 100% mine. That's my planting style. We also have a couple volunteers. Those are certainly tomatoes from last year. And since we already have this trellis system and I will eventually need to pluck out those, we left them. I did add a couple sweet pea, just the flowering annual kind, to the middle, just to add some extra color. And the pride enjoys my bunny grass, the only ones that have not been eaten. This is actually, let's get back here. Why well, I love seeing other people's garden tours. That's not a completely healthy plant right there, but you can still show a, like how you progress. It's not all about everything being perfect. It's about trying. It's about seeing what works for you. Speaking of a lot of trying, this bed I originally thought was going to be one of the more glorious beds that we had started this year, and it's given me nothing but troubles, problems. I don't like it much anymore but it's ever changing and we're ever adjusting. One of the main reasons why is I had a lot of bean packages that were really old um, and I just don't think they had a good germ germination. And then I was using, well, still am using all of these trough planters and I didn't do the right drainage. So we fixed those problems now, minus the old packages of beans. And we're just growing 
what we can. A couple extra mini bell peppers, lettuces that are still doing well. I believe that's either a romaine or buttercrunch style. These guys are doing fairly well. I'll definitely grow peas differently next year. Definitely not in the trough style. We'll do them in a full bed. Some more parsley, some chives, some fava beans. And then this is, I would say, our final bed for our vegetables. This is where all of our larger style of tomatoes are. So in the corners, we do have a cherry variety just because we had a couple extra bits of space. But in the center, we have Roma tomatoes and then we have beef steak tomatoes, which are more of your slicer varieties or ones we can use for sauces. You can still use your cherries for that, of course, but that's just our plan with these ones. We mixed in some onion, we mixed in some basil, we mixed in some marigold. And some more eaten bunny grass at the front. We're doing weave styles, so eventually this will be trellised up using a cotton cord. But for right now, we're keeping it low to kind of train the leaves up and keep them off of the ground. One of my favorite places our messy wildflower garden. We've slowly been making it a little bit more utilitary. So we've added raspberries that are flourishing. We've added some Egyptian walking onions. We've added lavender. We have chicken hens in here. We have a whole load of wildflowers that are just starting to pop up. So I'll be excited to see how this changes over the year. Last year, all of the back ornaments were pretty much covered with the height of the flowers. Over in this section, it's very similar to the one that was over on the other side. Only difference is instead of at the back having an extra tomato, I have a container version of pink pompous grass. The rest of my grasses are out front in my front garden, which I won't be showing you guys today, but I wanted to see how one would do in a container. Again, all about that testing. Final section of our backyard is this long planter. We did some more bunny grasses, some chives, and some flowering sweet pea. Hopefully this will just add some shade on the deck for Rocco once it grows in. We're gonna do a trellis up just because gets hot. There's not a lot of shade in our yard right now and he really likes being up on the deck. Likewise, we've kept a couple of things up here to hopefully save them. Some lemon balm, some more bunny grass, some more potato tests, more parsley, some ginger, some snacker cucumbers. A second round of beans and peas because the other ones I'm not happy with. But that's everything we have. It's forever growing. I hope you guys enjoy these kind of videos. I hope you guys tune in to what's in store for the future. There's definitely more elements to go through. Like that log, we have some garlic chives and regular chives. Sometimes you just forget everything you have. Have a great day, guys.